Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today I want to talk about paste wax. This is a substance that has an incredible amount of uses in the wood shop. So today I want to look at some of those uses uh, as well as what goes into it and what are some of the different types. So let's dive in. So first off, what is paste wax? Paste wax is a wax and an oil mixed together. Now if you want to see that, I have an entire video where I go into detail on making my favorite paste waxes, the ones that I use every day. But as long as you understand there isn't anything special to it, it's just wax and oil, you'll get the gist of how this all goes. The question comes, what wax, what oil, what consistency, do you also add a thinner, do you also add other things to it, and people can go off the rails on recipes, and for every woodworker you talk to, you're going to get a completely different recipe about paste wax. But as long as you understand, it's just wax and oil, sometimes some other things, that's all paste wax is. So in my shop, the ones that I use all the time are my hard wax and a thin wax. Now this is actually um, a container for Minwax, but I actually make my own and mix it in here because it's a great container for it. Um, but Minwax makes a great one. Johnson's Paste Wax makes a great one. Uh, it's basically the same thing. And I'll be talking about what exactly are the differences. But sometimes I want a really, really uh, wet wax, and that is something that I'll be using, like the Howard's Feed and Wax. Um, I might make mine in the future, but I have a couple bottles of this that I've been slowly working through, and so uh, this will last a while. As to the uses, Anytime where there's going to be glue spill out, I'm going to be using a hard wax. I'm just going to run over it like that. And now I've got this waxed surface on here that if I'm clamping up something and glue drips out onto it, it's not going to stick to the bar. I can peel it right off. I got glue chips here on the side that if I just scratch them, the glue just peels right off because the wax on here will stop any glue from sticking to this. Same thing with my workbench. I'll regularly wax down the bench and if any glue drips on it, I'll let it cure and it chips right off. I don't have to worry about glue sticking to any of my wood surfaces as long as I'm using paste wax. And I'm usually going to use my hard wax as it goes on a little bit easier. Next up we have rust protection. And for any of the tools that are regular are rusting, I'm also going to be waxing them. I'm going to be using my hard wax again, which is mostly just a wax with a little bit of oil in it. Work that down into the steel, and now I have a surface that rust is just not going to penetrate down onto. As long as I do this occasionally, even in some of the worst areas for rust problems, I'm not going to have any problem on my surface. On top of that, yeah, you also use it for lubricating the sole. So I can just come in here, just a couple passes like that, and now I'm ready to plane and I get a really, really smooth, silky gliding surface. If you've never used a lubricant on the bottom of your plane soles, you've got to try it. It is phenomenal. It just makes everything so much easier. Um, I used to use oil like the, uh, the rag in the can that Paul Sellers used. It works phenomenally. I find that paste wax lasts a little bit longer and so it stays on the plane a little bit better. So that's why I use this over an oil. But I know a lot of people really like oil or tallow. They all do a really good job of making the plane work phenomenally in the wood. On that note, with any of my saws, if I find that they're binding in the cut a little bit with the hard wax on here, and I've got a good lubricated surface, and this slides so much easier through the cut, as well as it keeps this rust protectant, so I'm not going to get any rust building up on the plate. So paste wax, great for rust protection, great for lubrication. Then we can get into the natural thing that most people think of as finishing wood. If I'm going to be finishing this, I'm going to put down a poly or some varnish or even a boiled linseed oil finish. Then I'm going to come over it with paste wax. The paste wax will go in and fill the pores so that it is a little bit more protective. It'll also give it a little more glossy of a sheen. And so with a simple thinner paste wax, you can get yourself a really nice glossy look even with a matte finish like BLO that just it really brings out the color and still allows you to feel the wood underneath. So I love using paste wax as the final thing to go on the wood. Now, if you want to see more detail about how I make my waxes, I've got an entire video on that. But this is basically just beeswax and linseed oil. And I use a raw linseed oil in here. Um, and if I remember correctly on this one, it's like three parts wax to one part oil. I keep it pretty hard. Um, I don't have a whole lot of oil in here. It's mostly beeswax. And that is my, my general hard. So this is what I use for lubrication. Um, I use it for protecting from glue. I use it for rust protection. This is a, a block that I can just smear on things. It goes on quickly and easily. And I've been using this for 
oh, almost two years now, and I'm, I'm only about halfway through the block. So this is one that I use all the time, and it's here beside my bench constantly. Then I also have my softer wax, and this is usually about 50-50 wax and oil. It's pretty loose, and I'm gonna melt the wax, mix in the oil, and then dump it into the can. I used to keep it in glass jars, but glass jars are a little bit harder to get into, and I don't like it quite as much. Um, so when I finished off my min wax paste wax, I thought, oh, I'm just going to stick it in this. And this actually works really well for holding it because it was like it was designed for it. On this particular batch, I mixed in a turpentine thinner. It just thins it out a bit and the turpentine will evaporate, leaving a harder wax behind. Um, sometimes if I'm going to do that, I'm actually going to make it a little bit harder than normal so that more wax means a little bit more protection. But that's what I'm going to be using for my finishing. It's a wax and an oil and a thinner. Um, and in this one, my oil is boiled linseed oil as opposed to the raw linseed oil. Now, do you have to use beeswax? No, I like beeswax, it's just a good thing. I know a lot of people use paraffin wax and use all kinds of wax. Just don't use waxes that come from Brazil. And if you don't understand what I just said, um, you might want to do a Google search because it's a joke. For an application of my hard wax, I just keep it in block form and I run it on whatever I want to put it on. And it just goes on quickly and easily. As this hard wax dries out, this area here that's fresh is very, very oily and very wet. And so I often use that for surfaces I want to get onto. But if I want just a wax, then I'm going to come back here where it has hardened up a good bit. And this is more just beeswax because the oil has hardened. And so I'll sometimes use this on some of my harder surfaces. Most of the time I'm just working on this area over here. For applying the soft wax, I have a steel wool that I keep in here, and this will allow me to load up on that. And then I can rub this in to the surface and work it down in. And the steel wool will micro scratch the surface, especially if I have a coating on top. That will allow the wax to work down in. I'm going to go across the grain with the grain in all directions. I'm going to let this sit until it becomes slightly harder, usually 15 minutes to an hour, depending upon. And then I'm going to come back with a rag and polish it down and actually shine the surface with it. And so usually I'm going to be doing the steel wool, though I do know a lot of people who use paper bags and things like that, it gets in there. Now this wax is actually a cream color. Um, when you buy it from the store, it's like this natural tan. Um, but you can also buy it in the store with a darker color. So if you have something with a lot of scratches and divots, you may actually want a darker color in there so that you don't get these white streaks. When it actually hardens, it becomes almost a stark white. To make it yourself, to make it harder, you can just mix in a dye or something else like that. But most of the time I stick with the cream color or the color of the wax. So it really doesn't matter what wax you use and what oil you use, mix them together and you have paste wax. Um, a lot of people will use a mineral oil for butcher blocks and things like that because this is, well, you can drink it if you want. But uh, the problem with mineral oil is it doesn't polymerize and so it washes out a little bit quicker. But being held in the wax will keep it in place a little bit longer. That's why usually I use a linseed oil, which if it's a raw natural linseed oil, you can drink that as well. But linseed oil does polymerize and so it will stay in the wood a good bit longer than a mineral oil. So now you can see why I have paste wax around me all the time and it shows up in most every video because there are just so many different uses from it. From protecting surfaces from glue and rust to protecting the finish, giving you a nice clean shine. There are just so many places that can be used in the shop. And once you start making it yourself, then you'll start making a couple different types for different uses and you'll find recipes that you really like. And it's one of those things you just kind of experiment with and you find something that works very well for you. And a recipe that works well for me may not for you because you're a different person. I may end up doing another video here soon where I make some more paste wax because I've been getting a lot of questions on this because it's one of these things that once you try it out and you use it, you find that you're using it more and more and in different places and different applications. It is an incredibly useful substance to have in the shop and then you'll start realizing that you need slightly different ones and then you need more and more until you're like me and paste wax goes on everything and toast in the morning. This is one of those subjects I could talk about for hours, but I'm going to leave it at that. And if you do have any more questions, throw those in the comments and I will get to as many of those as I possibly can. I know I'll be getting a lot of recipe questions. That's just the way of things because people want an exact recipe. And with paste wax, there really isn't an exact recipe. Just mix it together and uh, you'll get a paste wax. Have a little bit of fun. Try something out and don't worry about messing up because you really can't mess it up as long as you mix the two together. You got paste wax. So I want to say thank you to everyone who watched and click the thumbs up button. Thanks for helping out the channel. And I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Everyone scrolling over here on the side are the people who are making this channel happen. So thank you to everyone on Patreon, everyone who's clicked the join button down below and become a member of the site. You are amazing. And you're the reason the lights stay on and these videos keep coming. So thank you for that. Without you, uh, this channel wouldn't exist. I think that'll about do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day.
So when I made the original video about paste wax, I used to start my videos out with a dad joke, and my dad joke was, whatever wax you use, make sure it doesn't come from Brazil. Unfortunately, I keep getting comments of people saying, what's wrong with Brazilian wax? And I say, go talk to your wife. <laughs>